beautiful engineering is not an oxymoron. And what we're trying to teach is along the lines of uh, what David Billington has been teaching for decades. And that's the idea that uh, there are these best examples of structural engineering, which are, um, and their best examples are works of art themselves. Uh, bridges, for example, are pure engineering forms. And these vaulted structures of, of Felix Candelas are also pure engineering forms. And so what we're trying to illustrate or what we're trying to teach is this idea of engineering, the best examples of engineering are actually works of art. Felix Candela structures are pure structures in the sense that the roof and the walls are all integrated into one and it's a pure structural form based on a very rational engineering basis. Although Felix Candela was trained as an architect and had an architecture degree, we say that he was a self-taught engineer because he had a strong interest and talent in engineering analysis and in mathematics. When you see the exhibit or you study his works, you see all of his structures are all very different in terms of the forms. They all are based on the hyperbolic paraboloid geometric form, and they're all only one and a half inches thick. Candela liked to express that thinness. So when you take a look at his structures, you visit them or you see them in photographs, it's very clear how thin these structures are. It's actually quite striking. And if you go to visit them and, and have seen this, you can go right up to the edge of that structure and take a ruler and you can measure how thin that these structures really are. He is able to arrive at this economy of construction through the geometric shape of the hyperbolic paraboloid because the hyperbolic paraboloid, although curved in two directions, like a saddle, uh, can be formed with straight lines. And that leads to economy of a construction through straight line boards instead of curved forms, which are very expensive in construction. These things were built economically, and that's why we are at great pains to show the scaffolding on which they were built, because that's an important part of the exhibition. He was a builder, and he always considered himself a builder, but he was also a designer, and uh, because he had a strong aesthetic motivation, he was a structural artist. The criteria for structural art, this phrase coined by David Billington, is that it has to be efficient in the sense that it minimizes materials, but is still able to carry the forces that it's intended to carry, but still being very safe. It has to be economical um, by minimizing the cost, the cost associated not only with the building and the construction, but also we're talking about long-term durability. So when you combine efficiency and economy, we're talking about a sustainable structure. And it also has to be elegant. So what we're showing through these works of Candela is that he meets these three criteria. In 1950, Candela did not have the uh, computers or software that we have available for us today to analyze these structures. How do the forces on uh, these structures flow to the foundations? Candela made some assumptions in his analyses, and what we did was we used the most sophisticated computers and the most sophisticated software to make these analyses to essentially confirm what he had assumed in the 1950s. The exhibit consists of structural models, so s smaller scale, obviously, models of his works. And we had 19 students involved in building of these models. And actually, the students were very much an integral part of the entire project, not only the model building, but also the research that went into this. Because at the time that uh, this project began, in 2005, there was still a lot of research that needed to be done on Candela himself. We needed to write a book, and we needed to do the research. So we had students write master's thesis, PhD thesis, student projects, conference papers. And if you look at the book, it'll say this chapter was written by Edward Siegel and the co-authors, for example. So we had the students help us to put together the book even and write some of these chapters with us. So it was very much uh, an educational project from the very beginning. So the education aspect of this exhibition isn't just the exhibition. The process, the whole development of the project was an educational process as well.